So hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whichever part of the world and whichever time zone you are watching right now. So today we are in talks with an author by the name of Ruchira Garg. Now, Ruchira Garg, let me introduce uh, her to you. Ruchira Garg is a psychology graduate from Lady Shriram College, Delhi. After that, she has done her master's in management from Delhi School of Economics. And later on, she went into corporate job wherein she was into the HR field. Now, Ruchira is basically a blogger too, wherein being an avid traveler, she notes her experiences and the kind of events which has happened in her overall travel journey in her blog by the name of Wander B. Apart from that, Ruchira is has a lot of awards and rewards to her kitty. The major being uh, Woman Author of the Year in the year 2022, that is 2022, and the Sahitya Kosh Sarman for her literary contributions. Okay. Now, today we are going to talk about the second book of hers, which is The Single Innings. But prior to that, she has come up with the first book of hers, which is Just hold on. Huh? It's too far from me. So her debut novel, Soda, Water, Lemon, in my mocktails was published in 2022, which has accepted worldwide. So today we are going to talk about her second book, which is The Singles Inning. Now, what exactly is a singles inning? Whatever I understand out of it is, singles inning is a very powerful narrative that challenges traditional Indian societal norms. The novel follows Mahira, a middle-aged independent woman who chooses to remain single despite societal pressures. So basically it talks about what are the challenges faced by single people in our country. So let's now talk to Ruchira on what exactly was her thought process, what were her inspirations, what is the message which she would like to give out of this book. So over to you Ruchira. Thank you, Samir, and a very warm welcome to all our readers and listeners from across the world. I'm so glad to have you here and listening to us today. And uh, The Single Endings is my second novel, as Samir shared, and it, has, it was released in June 2024. My inspiration behind it to your question, Samir, actually came right after my first novel. So when, when my first novel, Soda, Water, Lemon, and my mocktail released, a lot of my readers uh, were very excited because they felt it was a very easy read. It was, you know, it brought back many of them back to reading. Right. They had stopped reading for quite some time now. Right. And they said it was a page turner. It was quite a gripping story. So they would like me to write more about, uh, you know, such stories of, you know, of very authentic characters. Right. But they were surprised as to why in my first book, I did not, uh, you know, project a, a protagonist, someone like myself, you know, who is a modern in, you know, modern independent woman, right. you know, a kind of a, why would I not put that kind of a character? And at that point of time, my response used to be, or my thought would be like, like who, who's really interested in our stories, you know, whether at work, whether in our social conversations, right. uh, as we say, hoti hai. you know, the pe people who are single, independent, modern individuals would always be in the periphery in any social gathering. Right. They would never be mainstream, or, you right. know, they would never be included uh, even in the workplace, you know, we don't get invited to, you know, in any of the diversity, you know, inclusion forums to speak because it's assumed that, you know, the life of singles is a cakewalk and uh, okay. or, or a lot of perceptions about singles being irresponsible or they are like that because they are non-adjusting. So there are, there are many perceptions that float around. Right, right. But as I talk more about this topic, I realized that this is a big wave, uh, at least in the Indian culture, which is now moving from its collectivism to individualism. And I don't think right now, there are hardly any, uh, I'm sure there are hardly any listeners or readers here who would have, uh, you know, who would not have a family member or a, or a friend who is not single. Right. Uh, or who is single. Who is single, we can say. Who is single, right? So everybody has, you know, whether sing, uh, unmarried, divorced or widowed, there's some kind of a reason right. for them to be single. Everybody has someone like that in the family. 
so it is it is a wave coming up and uh, i don't think we can be ignored anymore you know it can't be just shoved under the carpet and this topic should be brought out to the forefront the amount of stereotypes that exist in our society against singles should be spoken about and that was my inspiration behind writing about this and bringing out the stories of individuals and the characters that are in the book okay 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 so uh, uh, coming to the next question how do you come up with your stories okay and the characters do you have a specific routine or you just go by your uh, uh, what do you say thoughts or uh, whether your observation skills are at par or above uh, average than uh, an average individual how do you go about your stories and your characters so the, my characters do come out of my observations so i am uh, you know being an hr professional being a student of psychology i i have a keen interest in people and their stories and so when i'm speaking with folks uh, it does register very well like any kind of incident story that they share with me i observe uh, i kind of process it very well and they remain at the back of my mind so a lot of my observations lead to the stories that come to my mind when i think about writing my books uh, from a how do i build up these books I, i pretty much the first thing is to form the theme of what i want to write about right you know and that's actually something that takes the maximum time in writing a book is just to identify the broad and the plot and then accordingly uh, you know what kind of characters would exist um, and then i think about real people in all honesty whenever i'm building characters in my mind i would try to visualize somebody i would have seen heard met uh, who might be like that character that i want to create uh, so what does a person look like what kind of things do they say and that's how i start building my characters uh, visualizing you know real people and uh, and then i create them and uh, this, then i write the stories um, i also i also write as a reader so whenever i'm writing i think about my readers and what would make them turn the next page you know so whenever a chapter right. ends i want them wanting to get to the next chapter immediately and not put the book aside so that's my thought when i'm writing uh, and that's how my writing style comes up that's that's wonderful that's wonderful hence hence we as writers we need to be very keen on observation and uh, i personally believe that our characters are at one point of time real people who are living either living or are dead so that is what my uh, thought process is and i think you also follow the same yes yeah. that's right yeah uh, so ruchira you were into hr right and uh, yes. you made a very big shift from hr to writing okay what was all this transition all about okay and what inspired you to make this change happen because from a very secured environment you are coming to Uh, a profession which is completely uh, we can say out of the box so what what was your idea behind it what was your inspiration behind it so i'm still in hr uh, I'm, i have not given up my profession completely and i, I started so writing about it. yeah no no not, not at all um i started writing as an hr professional so my first foray into writing was more into hr topics and then you know i came i started blogging when the world got exposed to the world of blog right and then as you shared earlier you know i started travel blogging so these were all ways through which i started ex you know ex expressing myself through my writing and i quite enjoyed it it ended up ended up becoming like the safe space for me where i could express myself it was my recreation um you know even at odd hours in the night i felt that you know that was the thing i enjoyed myself when i was writing right uh, i i i often heard from people where they said that you know you have a way of storytelling and sometimes like if i would write an article for a newsletter or, or you know mail house magazine they would say some of the incidents when you write them they they sound so much more interesting as compared to what actually happened right like everybody right. wants to read about that so you should write more and i got encouraged by people so as i went about writing i felt my biggest transition was to get to writing a book and uh, you know when you're writing articles and you're writing blogs it's just a few hundred words but when you're writing a book uh, of course it's thousands and thousands of words and there true, is a screen you have to your reader has to imagine what is going on right you have to write dialogue you have to write you know uh, the entire visual versus just sharing your opinion right. uh, for that matter one of the things i try to do very hard in my in my books in my fiction books 
is not to express my opinion as a writer, but let my reader Very walk nice. away with whatever they want to interpret. Right. You know, so there is right. what's happening is in front of them, and each of them can they have their own interpretations, which leads to good conversations, right? Right. So when I made that transition, that was difficult, and which is why in my first book, which was published when I was very active in my corporate job, we were right. just coming out of COVID. Um, it took me a lot more time to write my first book because uh, you know it was just difficult to make myself create scenes versus uh, you right. know just express. Right. right. So that was, but once I made that shift and after my first book, it was a very big learning curve. Right. And from there. the second book was much much easier okay 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 uh so ruchira it, it is that people say that the toughest part of writing is penning it down but i believe it's not okay i believe penning down is the easiest part okay so what according to you was the toughest part the hardest part when you came up with uh, the single innings so you, to some extent writing it down is a little bit of a struggle for uh, writers initially you know as i said in my first book it was tough because you have to figure out how to write a book uh, and how to continue the momentum of a story i think for the single inning specifically what was tough was i was writing characters of both genders right you know uh, both male and female so in my first book my protagonist was a female and the whole whole story oriented was oriented around her and it's easier to you know as a female author to write about a female character and what she's experiencing but in the single inning my protagonists are also male you know so there is you know apart from mahira her friends are male there is agam there is rakshit and i had to write their characters with as much empathy and you know i had to write their dialogues i had to write their interactions with each other the way right. you know the speak to each other and have dialogues would be very different from the way the men would speak to each other so i had to constantly observe you know and and think about you know my male friends and how were they interacting how i had seen them do it and and kind of right. you know, recollect my observations right and put that so that was the toughest part to make sure that it wasn't i wasn't imposing my my gender thoughts into the book and okay. i was doing just all the characters without making it a woman oriented right. uh, fiction right 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 uh, so ruchira the book basically uh, addresses uh, societal biases towards single specifically okay so when when a reader reads your book okay as a author what do you want him or her to take the message away from the book so there are two segments of readers uh, uh, you know primarily that i would uh, i would like to address through this book one is of course the segment of readers who still are very much oriented towards the societal norm of couplehood you know and and where all these stereotypes are coming from and who who still think that you know they should give advice to singles and uh, you know that is the way to live uh, who probably still tell their single friends that you know how much they are missing out on life and you know and all those biases that come in right the purpose is to help them understand that you know why people choose to remain single you know it's not that people are born and they right from the time they open their eyes they think that they're going to be single right they go through a set of experiences and whatever choices they have to make and now they've made a choice and and they should be free to live with that choice versus the whole society always telling them how they should be living right i think that's one uh, you know to create that empathy for people who are single just like everybody else you know like everybody else has issues everybody else faces challenges they are equal part of the society and how can the society become more inclusive towards them that was one part and i wanted to highlight the kind of stereotypes because it's always very underestimated people think you know one is of course as i said you know singles are assumed to be uh, you know uh, irresponsible people don't want to give them their accommodation because they right. say mushkil aa jayega to ganda kar dega mera ghar you know nobody wants to give it to them likewise in many times societies very clearly have labels you know that singles hmm. not allowed right or party not be allowed all that would happen our, our uh, actually our you know rituals in various in functions don't right. have a role for singles. right so they they are very excluded so i want to wanted to bring that out for our society on the other hand i also wanted to address people who are either choosing to remain single or are somewhere on that periphery and they are hearing all these comments all the time or they are hearing all these you know facing these biases all the time of what potentially could also be a solution for them okay. you know there it is a way of living and how can 
So Ruchira, when you were in the process of writing the book, okay, I believe you have done a lot of research on the single and versus uh, couples, okay. So I just want to have a very quick uh, answer from you. What what is the psychological thought process of people who think other people about singles? We can say. Well, our psychological process, uh, or I would rather say it's more of a cultural process, right? Our right. our our society, especially in India, still follows the age-old Vedic ashrams that, you know, by 25, you should complete your education. By 50, your child should go to college. Uh, you know, all that Grihastha ashram, Vanprastha ashram. That's right. what our society has been following for a very long time. Right, right. But those ashrams were written at a time when, you know, we after 50 life used to end and you know you had to basically go into god's way after that right. age but today if you look at people who are 50 nobody wants to leave everything renounce the world and go to god's way right? it is true. the new 40s right so when the world has changed why have these concepts of couplehood not changed not you know changed. and the whole focus on uh, a marital life a family life the definitions of family are, are still you know very archaic hmm. uh, and despite you know, in a lot of modern situations also, I've still seen like, you know, people who are my peers, uh, you know, who are very, very well educated, very uh, modern out outlooks. Otherwise, often ended up, end up feeling, uh, feeling the sense that, okay, there is some kind of a failure if you're single. Oh. So if they have a friend or a friend who's single, there is a sense that, you know, you have, you're incomplete. You mm. know, you failed at something. You know, that is the sense that kind of comes in. And then people also feel morally responsible to tell the person how to not remain single. And that's okay. where they end up put, putting a lot of pressure on singles, right? That, you know, right. are you doing this? Are you having a profile? Are you looking out? The, the challenge is like, you know, when you are, how do you look out? How do you keep, do you carry a board and tell everybody I'm single, I'm ready to mingle? You know, I think uh, people forget that, you know, and, mm. and the way they constantly keep singles puts them under a lot of pressure. Right. Which is also kind of, uh, you know, singles don't talk about it, but a lot of them become very vulnerable because they are facing so much of social pressure all the time right. that they end up wanting to either get married to the first person that they find, and which is also not right. great because it ends up increasing the divorce rate. Right. Or they kind of become subject to scams, you know, online scams where you go onto a Tinder or some place and right. you find people who are facing you. So that's very prevalent in India because of this amount of pressure that singles. And here, it's both men and women, right? So women, of course, face a lot of pressure because for them, it's like, what does the future look like for you? You know, you will end up being a single woman. For men, it's even worse. For men, if you're single, if you're middle-aged and, uh, and you know, if you're good-looking, then even worse, right? Like, why is a good-looking man still single? And there will be all kinds of you know, and, and some of them are very, very, uh, very cruel comments that people make and biases that they make and, you know, even questioning, uh, you know, their orientation and stuff like that. Right. So I have as talking to people who are single, as I looked at my own experiences of the society and I realized that there is still uh, a lot of maybe it's unconscious bias. Maybe people don't realize how much it, you know, it impacts the singles when they say all this. Right, right, right. Uh, so, Ruchira, we are running out of time. Okay. I, I want a very quick answer to the last question of mine is uh, sure. many, many, we have many viewers, we have many listeners who would like to go into writing their own book and then publishing it. Okay. So what is the kind of advice you as a author would like to give them? So I would say we are in a very good era where, you know, publishing is not so difficult anymore. You don't have to, you know, if you have some good content that you want the world to read, then don't wait to be, uh, you know, for somebody to find you as a publisher. It's right. the other way around. Right. You can easily find there are mechanisms to publish through Amazon, through, you know, partnered publishing and other publishing companies. So just go there and, and share what you have to do. Because what, what's also happening is we are in a time where before, if you've thought of a novel idea, if you don't publish, somebody else will come up with it and your idea will become redundant. Right. So go out right. there and publish yourself and publish it for yourself first, uh, you know, because you want to express something to the world. Right. Go ahead and do that. Nothing is stopping you. Not a problem. Not a problem. So, Richira, it was very much nice talking to you. Thank you for sharing the whole process on which you uh, uh, wrote the uh, 
your second book, The Single Innings. And overall, it was very nice talking to you. I hope the readers all would also be, and the readers and the viewers of this podcast will also be benefited out of your experience, what you have shared in the book. So it was nice talking thank to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, likewise, uh, thank you, yeah, Samir. Yeah, yeah. So, viewers, this is Samir signing off on this podcast, and see you the next time. Thank you.